I'm Gary Thomas. Christensen, mayor of the city of Malden. Strike that. Proud mayor of the city of Malden. To be gathered here with you this evening to begin what will be a new tradition for our community. Before I begin, this would not be possible without a number of people dedicating their time, and I would like to acknowledge them now. First, from the Malden Public Library, Dora St. Martin. And you know they were going to be involved. Let's give it up for the Historical Society. Barbara Tolstrup, John Tramadozzi. I also want to acknowledge the Girl Scouts. We have Heidi Sutherland leading her group. Where's Heidi? Thank you. Oh, there she is. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much, as always for being part of these events. Uh, we also have Scott Kurtzer from the Boy Scouts. Where's Scott? Take a bow. Scott, thank you as always. And we also have Sergeant Ju Joe Pullen. Joe? And I think one of the reasons why we're all gathered here tonight stems from an article from the Boston Globe. And I would like to introduce now Bill Fowler. Bill? Bill, thank you so much. And behind me, we have our elected officials, uh, Debbie DiMaria from the Malden City Council. And City Council from Ward 5, Barbara Murphy. And from the Malden School Committee, Adam Weldike. And we have both our chiefs here tonight. Police Chief Kevin Mullis. And we have our Fire Chief Jack Colangeli. And let me end by just saying how impressed I am with someone who, at a moment's notice, said that he would be here along with his troops to help us kick off tonight's festivities, and that's Tom Coots. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. He, along with the Charlestown militia, didn't hesitate when we called them late in the game to tell them about what we were trying to do, and now they're here tonight. And again, we just couldn't say thank you enough thank you. to all of you. Thank you. And I have to acknowledge from my office, Maria Luis, Chief of Staff, Kathleen Manning Hall, Paul Hammersley, and Karen Hayes. Thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, the architect, Ron Cochran, is he here? Okay, we want to thank him as well because it was his original idea about tonight's uh, event. So let me just end before I turn it over to uh, the festivities that. Uh, for me personally, as mayor now for four years, nothing has impressed me more when people come through my office and of all the wonderful treasures we have up at City Hall, the one that people really marvel over are the town instructions. Malden was the first around here to say that we were all in no matter what. So in other words, whether the Second Continental Congress change up what was originally being discussed, Malden said, no need. No need for you to get back to us, because whatever it is, so long as it involves freedom in our ability to separate ourselves and become a republic, we were going to be all in on it. And so tonight, we want to have reenacted those precious instructions that have impressed so many, including myself. And before we do, though, I want to make sure that we recognize our nation's symbol, the American flag. So the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts are now going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Shoulder your firelocks. Poise your firelocks. Present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
justice for all. Firelux. Okay, so now we're going to turn it over to Mr. Coots, and as we do, I think the best way to segue from me to him is through a quote from Thomas Jefferson. How little do my countrymen know what precious blessings they are in possession of and which no other people on earth enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Tom Coots and the Charlestown Militia. Before I begin, I just want to make all of you aware what a precious document that you have in this town. This document is historical on every level. And I want you to listen to the words as I read them from 1776. They rang true then and they rang, ring true today as well. Malden, Massachusetts, their statement of independence. At a legal meeting of the inhabitants of the town of Malden, May 27, 1776, it was voted unanimously that the following instructions be given to their representatives in Congress. To Mr. Ezra Sargent, Sir, a resolution of the Honorable House of Representatives calling upon several towns in this colony to express their minds in respect to the important question of American independence. This is the occasion of which now I am instructing you. The time was, sir, when we loved the king and the people of Great Britain with an affection most truly filial. We felt ourselves interested in their glory. We shared in their joys and in their sorrows. We cheerfully poured the fruits of all of our labors into the lap of our mother country. And without reluctance, expended our blood and treasure for their cause. These were the sentiments toward Great Britain while she continued to act the part of a parent state. We felt ourselves happy in our connection with her, nor wished to be dissolved, but now our sentiments are altered. It is now the ardent wish of our soul that America become a free and independent state. A sense of unprovoked injuries will arouse the resentments of the most peaceful. Such injuries these colonies have received from Britain. Unjustifiable claims have been made by the king and his minions to tax us without our consent. These claims have been prosecuted in a manner most cruel and unjust to the highest degree. The frantic policy of the current administration has induced them to send fleets of armies to America, that by depriving us of our trade and cutting the throats of our brethren, they might awe us into submission and suddenly erect a system of despotism in America which should so far enlarge the influence of the crown as it would be enabled to rivet their shackles upon the good people of Great Britain. This plan was brought to a crisis upon the ever memorable 19th of April. We remember that fatal day. The expiring groans of our countrymen yet vibrate in our ears. And we now behold the flames of their peaceful dwellings ascending to heaven. We hear their blood crying to us from the ground for vengeance, charging us as we value their peace in their names to have no further connection with, who can unfeelingly hear the slaughter of and composedly sleep with their blood upon his soul. The manner in which this war has been prosecuted hath confirmed to us these sentiments, piracy and murder, robbery and the breach of faith have been conspicuous in the conduct of the king's troops. Defenseless towns have been attacked and destroyed. The ruins of Charlestown, which are in our daily view, they remind us of this. 
the cries of the widow and the orphan demand our attention. They demand that we should take the hand of pity and wipe the tear from their eye and with the sword of their country should avenge their wrongs. We have long entertained the hope that the spirit of the British nation would once more induce them to assert their own and our rights and to bring to condign punishment the elevated villains who have trampled upon the sacred rights of men and affronted the majesty of this people. We hope in vain and now have realized that they have lost the spirit of just resentment. We therefore renounce with disdain our connection with the kingdom of slaves and we bid a final adieu to Great Britain. Could an accommodation now be effected? We have reason to think that it would be fatal to the liberties of America. We should soon catch the contagion of veniality and dissipation, which hath all Britons been now brought to a lawless domination. Were we now placed in the same situation that we were in in 1763, where the powers of appointment to offices and the commanding of the militia would be in the hands of the governors. Our arts, trades, and manufacturers would be cramped. Nay, more than that, the life of every man who has been active in the cause of this country would now be endangered. For these reasons, as well as many others which might be produced, we are confirmed in the opinion that the present age will be deficient in their duty to God, their posterity, and to themselves if they do not establish an American Republic. This is the only form of government which we wish to see established, for we can never willingly be subject to any other king except he who is possessed of infinite wisdom, goodness, and rectitude, and who alone is fit to possess that unlimited power. We have freely spoken our sentiments upon this important subject, but we mean not to dictate. We have unbounded confidence in the wisdom and uprightness of the Continental Congress. With pleasure, we recollect this affair to your direction. And we now instruct you, sir, to give them the strongest assurance that if they should declare America to be a free and independent republic, your constituents will support and defend that measure to the last drop of their blood and the last farthing of their treasure. Witness my hand, Samuel Merritt, Town Clerk, Malden.